Thank you, uh, Madam Chair, very much. And we welcome our nominees. And uh, you're each eminently qualified. And we thank you for your willingness to uh, serve our country at the, in these enhanced roles. And uh, Ms. McCabe, you worked up in Massachusetts um, over the years. And, uh, uh, and that's going to make that's going to qualify you to uh, be the one that can understand and translate um, Administrator uh, McCarthy's Boston accent for the other people at the EPA. And, and uh, I think that's going to be a very important role for you. Um, Ms. McCabe, you have in, an important task uh, before you in setting standards to reduce carbon pollution from power plants in the United States. And I'm confident that it can be done in a way which is good uh, for the environment and good for the pocketbooks of the people in our country. And I'm confident because of what I've seen happen in my own state of Massachusetts, um, there has been an 11 percent annual growth in the clean energy sector in the creation of jobs as uh, the state has invested almost 90 percent of the proceeds from the regional greenhouse gas actions into um, energy efficiency, helping to make our state amongst the most energy efficient in the nation. In addition to working with states that primarily produce fossil fuels, will you also be working with states that are innovating new ways to cut carbon pollution while growing their economies as you craft new standards for carbon pollution with power plants? We certainly will, Senator, and you're absolutely right that states like Massachusetts are leaders on energy efficiency and, and other very innovative and, and positive ways to, to reduce uh, the, the energy we use um, in ways that save people money. Uh, we are a small state, but we now have 5,000 companies with 80,000 jobs in the clean energy sector in Massachusetts, and most of that is just in the last five or six years, just tremendous growth. And, uh, and it reflects the innovation uh, that can happen uh, as we move to these new uh, technologies of the 21st century. Uh, I also wanted to focus on methane emissions from natural gas, which also impact the climate, public health, and the energy bills of most Americans. And I would just note for my Republican colleagues who have expressed concern uh, that protecting people's health might increase the cost of electricity, that they should be concerned that exporting America's natural gas overseas will also raise electricity prices and harm the manufacturing resurgence and job growth that America has been experiencing in the last few years. The explosion in Harlem in Mar March tragically underscored the threat that old natural gas distribution pipeline can pose. A report that I released last summer found that gas customers in Massachusetts paid up to $1.5 billion in extra charges from 2000 to 2011 because of the leaking gas pipelines. Uh, the cost to consumers nationwide was in the tens of billions. And besides wasting money, this leaked natural gas, which is primarily methane, is a potent climate pollutant. Ms. McCabe, the interagency methane strategy that was recently released raises concerns about methane leaks on the distribution side of the natural gas system. Is that something that the EPA will be looking at further? Uh, Senator, yes, in, in coordination and cooperation with the Department of Energy, um, which has significant responsibilities in these areas, uh, the Office of Air and Radiation doesn't have as much uh, responsibility on, on, on those particular aspects, but we will certainly be working with the Department of Energy on those issues. And finally, Ms. McCabe, just a quick comment on ongoing work at the EPA on bioenergy. Mm -hmm. In 2011, the EPA granted a three-year ex exemption from regulation under the Clean Air Act for carbon emissions from bioenergy facilities. EPA then commissioned an expert panel of the Science Advisory Board to review the agency's proposed bioenergy carbon accounting framework. They found that EPA's framework needed to account for the important ongoing role that forecast that forests uh, play in sequestering atmospheric carbon dioxide and that we cannot automatically assume biomass energy is carbon neutral. Basically, you can't cut down a 150-year-old forest, 
burn it and assume that there's no net carbon impacts. In 2012, my home state of Massachusetts published final carbon accounting regulations using a methodology very similar to those recommended by the Science Advisory Board. I would encourage EPA to incorporate these key science-based recommendations into whatever new rules are established to govern carbon emissions uh, related to bioenergy. Thank you, Senator. We'll make sure to uh, take a look at those. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and, uh, and I thank you uh, so much, all of you, for your service. Um, the planet um, is running a fever. There are no emergency rooms for our planets, so we have to engage in the kind of smart, forward-looking activities that help us to avoid the worst, most catastrophic uh, consequences of uh, global warming. Uh, and you are on the front lines of doing this, but being smart uh, as you're doing it. And I think that there is a way that we can uh, move forward that uh, actually creates hundreds of thousands of new jobs in our country. And I think that should be our goal. And I thank you, Madam Chair. Senator, thank you so much. Senator Sessions. Thank you, Madam Chairman. And um, 